there is someone you have been building this is more than seven years i'm seeing a building and i'm seeing the number seven written on it more than seven years it has not been completed whether it's an individual whether it's a family no matter what it is that you do it looks like it is not completed i want you to lift your hands you don't have to come out the power of god is coming upon you right now it is the finisher's anointing you will be surprised to see what happens some of you before december i'm standing as apakosh ketebeleketa embrakatos ketibalata every power sitting on this project and will not allow you make progress i decree and declare go forward in the name of jesus hallelujah huh. the lord is opening my eyes and i'm standing in front of a river please look listen carefully i'm standing in front of a river and this is what i'm seeing you would think it's fish that is coming out of the river but i'm seeing human beings tied with chains you know how fish comes out and goes back that's what i'm seeing the Lord wants to set people free now. Please listen. I'm going to, it's a massive deliverance that is going to happen now. Please hear me. I'm seeing people like you know how you are in a river and it should be fish that come. You know how fishes jump, but I'm seeing human beings tied like fishes, but they are human beings. I'm praying right now. You're about to shout, Jesus, my goodness, my God. Every marine spirit, spirits of darkness connected to the waters it was an element of creation god gave for man's advantage but has been manipulated by powers that be in the name of jesus anyone whose destiny has been buried kept down by orchestrations of evil spirits as you shout the name jesus may that fire come upon you and i lose you are you ready now at the count of three one two three shout jesus I lose you now. I lose you now. Covenants and altars tied to water. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now I'm still praying in the name of Jesus whether you believe it or not listen I'm telling you when God reveals this many of you may not know the cause of the issues around your life wicked demonic patterns no hear me look up let me teach you something the Bible says in revelations when you read 18 19 20 it says in the judgment hell gave up the dead then the bible said the sea gave up the dead the sea has become a burial ground for many people's destinies tied down by activities of witchcraft when you read your bible it says all of the abundance came forth out of the waters and the devil has manipulated it to destroy people i am still praying again anyone's destiny here your destiny means where God has preordained for you that has been tied, trapped down. Maritally, financially, in terms of fruitfulness, I decree and declare the spirits that are back of it be judged now. Be judged now. Be judged now. Be judged now! Be judged now! Hallelujah! Please look at me. I want to ask you a question. When Naaman washed seven times and got up and his skin became free, look up where did the leprosy go to 
where did the dead skin go to the spirit of that leprosy was still hovering round. the man who Jesus told him to wash at Siloam when he washed and he saw where did the blindness go to now listen just because people have abused all of these things through unfortunately extra biblical practices you need to have spiritual intelligence enough to understand the dynamics of commanding victory for the believer are we together now the water is a very mysterious spiritual substance because it has an expression of the trinity too as ice as liquid and as gas water is not limited by anything does not fear anything does not run away from anything very mysterious father i want to pray over chains that is holding people's progress chains chains we're going to pray for the sick shortly but there are many of you you do not know why regardless the efforts anything you do it looks like there is no result for it and you are not lazy you are not lazy you are diligent some of you have been in this city for many years and yet it looks like nothing has opened for you please take seriously the prayer i'm about to pray because fire from heaven is about to fall on someone i decree and declare right now anyone whose destiny has been chained and hijacked by the powers that be in the name that is above all names my god i'm seeing fire resting on people i declare be released now be released now be released now Do you believe in the power of prophecy? Listen, many of you will be surprised at the testimonies. See, you are not the only one listening. Your situations are also listening. Are we together? That means conditions also listen. Everything has breath. Everything listens. So don't think you are the only one who is here and your problems are somewhere scattered around. No, they are all listening. Did the Bible not say that when there was a conversation between the prophet and the woman, the oil and the jar, they were all part of, they were participating in the conversation. Nothing except, and he said, no, don't call that except. Go and borrow vessels and the oil will show you it was part of the conversation. There's someone here. You've been having, I'm going to pray for the sick shortly. You've been having severe headache. When it comes upon you, it almost acts as if you are losing your mind. This is a very demonic thing. This is not just a headache as a result of fatigue. The power of God is coming upon you right now. Right now. Two of you are not in this auditorium. But the power of God is coming upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. In the name of Jesus. And for all of you who have come out here, you did not just come out to waste your time. I decree and declare. The same way these spirits have left you, they go for good. And for some of you, even before this service is over, your testimony begins. Deborah, 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 Deborah. Your name is Deborah? Your wife, allow him, please leave him. Deborah.
please hold the person who starts running out now i just saw in my vision someone is running out hold that one person and bring the person out literally like running just hold the person so they don't injure themselves but bring them i'm going to pray for you i had in my spirit deborah ah the power of god is coming on you laughter this is what i'm hearing for deborah laughter 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 i decree it in the name of jesus christ laughter you are entering your season of laughter i prophesy it and i decree and declare you receive it by the spirit may it be so for you laughter laughter anything that fights your laughter i curse it right now he said when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream i prophesy as i hear in my spirit laughter laughter step into your season of laughter in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the lord is asking me to pray for a family oh dear you are from gombe state gombe state where is the family gombe state uh ah. i'm not saying everybody from gombe state come out oh if we have that there is I, i'm seeing a family ah mother and not our people are already out now what do we do mama you are welcome we'll pray. of course everybody wants to go forward so once you hear a word i will pray for you that's no 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 you don't have to come ah deborah, deborah i already prayed for deborah you received by faith and eh? we're talking of um, gombe state the lord is speaking to me I want to pray for you please believe in the power of god oh we are not acting this thing go it's a mighty visitation god is going to give that family who can stand against the lord no one can ah no one will who can stand against our king no one can altars are breaking no oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh victory belongs to jesus Father, you spoke to me about a family in Gombe State. I'm using these ones in front as a prophetic point of contact. Listen, the power of God is going to come upon you. And everything that represents shame and reproach for that family, whether you are here represented or prophetically following online. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let the power of God bring to end every activity of witchcraft now. Every activity of witchcraft now be broken, be broken. Help mama, please. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken now. The Lord is showing. I'm going to pray for you. Listen. In the name of Jesus, um, the Lord is showing me a family where the ladies don't give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Not, not necessarily in Gombe State. This is another case God is showing me. Ladies, whether they get married, they are not able to have children. And this is like a pattern. It's happened to a number of the ladies. You don't have to come out. Whether you are online or you are in here, please, I want you to believe. God is visiting people's situations. In the name of Jesus, before I finish with you, my Gombe people, any spirit that has sat on the womb of the ladies in any family and vowed that they will not give birth by the power that raised Christ from the dead, we command those altars broken now. 
we command those altars broken now now for all of you i know some of you your maybe your children or your siblings are not here since god spoke about families as you are standing in faith i use you as a point of contact and i pray for your siblings wherever they are in this nation and across the globe between now and the end of this year return with strange testimonies return with strange testimonies return with strange testimonies in the name of jesus god bless you please return to your seat please return to your seat please return to your seat i'm going to pray for the sick how many of you believe in prosperity financial prosperity i know there are five levels i'm talking about financial prosperity i believe in it oh. I don't know if you don't believe you can you can it is a very bad thing to be poor let me just tell you straight to the point the reason is and remember you have been taught here when we teach this we are not teaching from a an unbelievers carnal pursuit for material things but let me assure you by the spirit of God, you will not be able to do much for the kingdom and for yourself. Poverty takes away dignity from the life of people. Hallelujah. There is the wisdom that brings prosperity. First as a superior belief system and then an understanding of the value that you provide. There is favor that ties with wisdom and brings prosperity. But there is the prophetic that manages the back end of spiritual interruptions to that journey. Get this equation now. Wisdom as your belief system and as the value that you provide. That is the department of wisdom. There is favor programming men and systems to respond favorably to you. Then there is the prophetic dimension. Are we together? If you lack any one of these three, you will be poor. If you have a superior belief system, you have value alone, you will be very limited. You must have favor because at the back end of what brings you wealth are men. And if those men don't like you and don't believe you, you can be valuable and you will still remain there. Are we together? If you have favor in your life and you do not have wisdom, you will only have circumstantial wealth as important as it is because men will come but wisdom your your mindset will keep driving away what favor puts in your hand but if you have wisdom and have favor as powerful as it is and you do not have the prophetic you will keep building and crashing because one activity of demon spirits one activity of the realm of the spirit will rubbish your wisdom completely You can impart the spirit of wisdom but it takes time to build belief systems and that's what we do every week as for favor there is a grace and there is an understanding that brings favor but this prophetic dimension is my assignment I'm going to pray for the sick but I want to speak it listen by the grace of God I vowed before God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant alone and then become irresponsible in every area of their life god is not glorified if you cannot pay your children's school fees god is not glorified if you sit down the time you should be spending building your spiritual life you are praying for rent no god is not glorified if you have to tell lies and lie that you are not in the house because the person you are owing has come to knock and afterwards you ask for forgiveness then you lie again it is the assignment of the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit to provide for you the resources that it takes to prosper. Listen to me. Men can prosper. I know that there are, this ministry has very successful people at different levels. Building transgenerational wealth is more than just having money in your account. Building transgenerational wealth is rising to a point where you build systems that can secure your life that even in famine you will laugh. 
this balloon success of rising up today and anything that happens across the world you are shaking that's not the kingdom's way at every level we can still rise higher and for some of you who are saying i am comfortable your understanding is poor as far as kingdom advance is concerned because until the kingdom has benefited from your resources you are not prosperous for as long as your resources ends up with you your comfort yes but your comfort alone wrong for the sake of thy prosperity i desire your house i'm going to speak over your life before we pray for the sick please I plead with you in the name of Jesus. If you ever believe and respect the prophetic, believe this declaration. Just believe it and insult me that I'm stupid afterwards if it does not happen. But please believe it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cry unto you, you are a covenant keeping God. I have vowed and you have agreed with it that we will raise a people of influence. Lord, there are people here who love you sincerely, but this financial embarrassment has tied their lives down. I stand by the prophetic in the name of Jesus for as many who believe in this grace and whose heart is open. I prophesy to you the grace that lifts men, bringing them out of financial shame to a life of dignity that allows you to serve the Lord. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Businesses, receive that grace now. Families, receive that grace now. Territories, receive that grace now. Anyone who is in any financial situation, you are owing, you lost money, you are in business, there's some kind of financial trouble. In the name of Jesus, like Elijah prophesied over the, the, the woman in Zarephath, I speak to your life. May God raise men to bring you out of that situation. May God raise men to bring you out of that situation. Apostle, what do I do to prosper? May my God show you in a dream. In the name of Jesus, the area connected to your wealth, I ask my God to open your eyes in the vision of the night and show you where he has kept the wine and the oil for you. Can I declare favor over you? If it happens only once in your life, it is not favor. There is a big difference between breakthrough and favor. Breakthrough is when the obstacles and the limitations that impede you are taken away. Favor is when under regardless what conditions, you begin to have predictable positive results. God compelling men to help you. Listen, I submit to you and at the risk of sounding proud, I know what I'm saying. Forgive me if my statement or anything sounds like boasting or arrogance. I know what it means to walk in the favor of God. I'm praying for you such as I have. In the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God, the one who favors men. I'm praying for you. Let this mantle rest upon your head. May this mantle rest upon your head. May this mantle rest upon your head. Sincerely believers hear me, let me tell you the truth. Most of the things that are written in your prayer request are within the department of favor to give you that testimony. If you will be honest. 
We are going to pray for the sick shortly. But most people, there are those who are not sick in body except they are standing for others. But there is a disease of the absence of favor. You can know that a man's life is not favored even if you are making money. You should know by now that favor is far more than money. You can have financial resources and not be favored. The difference will be clear. The proof of favor is more than money. Access to the heart of men. That's the proof of favor. You can have money and everybody hates you. There are many things money cannot do. I've always prayed for people and you've heard me say it. That may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money. Money can fail. It's a piece of paper. Real wealth is men. Not things. Men. The only reason why things have value is because of men who value them. Please learn this. High level spiritual intelligence. Real wealth is men. When God connects your heart to men, he has connected your heart to things and he has connected your heart to money. But you can be connected to money, connected to things, it will kill you, destroy you. Who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. I repeat, real wealth is men. In the multitude of men, not things, is a king's honor. Somebody who can remember you and stand for you and see to it that under their watch you actualize destiny unhindered by any kind of thing whether financial or systemic limitations now that is wealth don't get into that illusion that money does anything no people misunderstand the scripture that says money answered all things what does the bible mean but money because at those times it was not your idea of money that they had real wealth is men that's why Jesus did not come to die for things creation was part of the beneficiaries of salvation but principally it was for men if you have money use the money to build relationships if you have money and the only thing you have is a house and you say I have an estate you will be surprised estates don't visit you when you are in the sick bed estates don't say I love you estates don't say I'm praying for you the fruit in your shop will not look at you and say good morning sir don't be carried away by mundane things and ignore men real wealth is men let's pray for healing please lay your hands you're trusting God for a miracle and while I'm praying for the sick please begin just warm yourself for two minutes in the spirit inside and outside just warm yourself in the spirit. Kante prakate kalaraba. Rasta pakate kete beledeba. The word of God building us, making us strong, giving us wisdom. Rekete ke prakata balaraba. Say, Lord, I open myself to the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, move through me. Let me become a manifestation of the glory in miracles in signs in wonders pray say lord i open up myself to heal the sick to cast out devils that there be a demonstration of the spirit through my life pray the spirit of the lord is upon you and he has anointed you to preach glad tidings to the poor to set the captives free to deliver the oppressed to raise the banner of authentic power genuine power the power of the Holy Ghost say Lord walk through me do impossible things through my life lift your head and say these hands are blessed say these hands heal the sick these hands will liberate nations these hands will liberate families lift your hands to the heavens say lord these hands will open up the gates 
of nations, this end will bring the power of God to bear. This end will enthrone Christ. The Lord move through this end. Move through this body. Rededicate your body as an instrument for the glory. Rededicate your body. The Lord move through my body. Every fiber of my cell a superconductor of power. I open the gates of healing, the gates of breakthrough, the gates of prosperity. Pray in the name of Jesus. Say the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm not ordinary. I'm a walking wonder. I have the name of Jesus. I go in that name. I do exploits. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Lord, I do exploit by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Now you are going to pray and say, Lord, put your power upon my lips that when I speak to sinners or the sick or the oppressed, let a two-edged sword, the Bible says he was upon the horse, and out of his mouth proceeded. He said, I have given you the tongue of the learned. Pray. Say, Lord, anoint my lips. Let me release the fire, the power of the Holy Ghost. As I bless, bless the man. As I prophesy, let there be a performance. As I speak the word of faith, the word of healing, the word of comfort. Make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and we're out of here. I'd like you to pray. We are going to lift up all the men of God that are being derailed. Are you listening to me? In a vain quest for power, some of them are your pastors. If you love them, lift your voice. Pray for the church of God. They may not be your church members. We don't believe in just denomination and membership. But the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Help the pastors in Abuja. Help the pastors in Lagos. Help the prophets in Portacon. Oh God, we pray. Deliver them from witchcraft. Deliver them from error. Pray for your pastor. You know he loves God. You know she loves God. They are just being derailed. Say, my God, according to your mercy, bring them back. That they will denounce the hidden works of our righteousness. Pray for them. Don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. They love the Lord. They are just being misled. Pray for them. Mercy, O oh God. Mercy. We pray for the church in Zaria, our territory, our Jerusalem. We pray let there be authentic power upon our full people, O oh God. Let God's people not be deceived anymore. Through dreams, angelic encounters, reveal yourself to these men, O oh God, that they may repent and turn away from every walk of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer point. Sorry, I know we're out of time. There are free buses. You are going to pray for yourself. That you will not start now. See, let me tell you something. Listen. Many of you have not experienced fame. Hear me. Many of you do not know what honor looks like. You don't know what it means to walk and become the subject of discussion. Job said, when I walk, the elders bowed their head when they saw me. The young men talked about me. When my rose was with butter, there is a way God will honor you. That if you are not cheerful, you can shift away. Lift your voice and cry. Say, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. 
Lift your voice and cry. There are many of you, you've not even seen anything in your campuses, your little fellowships. You're already bragging and making noise. Say, Lord, help me tonight in Koinonia. That Jesus alone will be lifted. Not E and I, not Koinonia, not your pastor's name, not your ministry. If I be lifted. Lord, grant me a humble heart. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to start a wrong movement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So evangelize like never before. Run away from pride. Run away from it. Let believers know you are genuine. Let believers know you are real. The things you used to do, you can't do them again. Your Christian experience must translate into something that the world can relate with. Hallelujah. I bless you with a deeper hunger for God. A deeper passion. Beyond your present experience. In the name of Jesus, let it be a well that no water can fill up. Let that hunger be a well that no water can fill up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must make a commitment to win souls. Hallelujah. I will put that soul winning spirit in all of us. I know that, see, we must take evangelism serious. Evangelism has gone out of the church of Christ. Many things is here now. Money, fame, apostle. God will give you those things. But we must restore the passion. When somebody comes to give testimony and they talk about born again, nobody says anything. They talk about a changed life. People trivialize it. But if you say you bought a new car, people stand up. I'd like you to pray in one minute. I know we're out of time. Say, Lord, if your heart beat is souls, I repent for trivializing it. Lift your voice and pray. My God, I pray that that fire for missions and evangelism will fall upon your people. Let Koinonia be known as a place of radical power evangelism. There are hundred level students scattered. Save them. I deliver you from fear. The fear of men. I deliver you from it. You will never walk in power until you have a heart for soul. Someone saved you. Someone preached to you. You must take the banner of soul winning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If souls do not come to the kingdom, let me tell you we are joking. Are you hearing me? If souls do not come to the kingdom, we can do our jamboree I tell you, we have no notice in heaven. Thank God for the cars. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for falling down. But how many people can say, I came to know the Lord Jesus? How many drunkards can you bring to Koinonia? That someone will say, I was a drunkard. You know your classmates. Some of them are not born again. You are, you are not doing anything about it. You are there bragging that you are walking in power. You will never see miracles until you truly need souls. If you are not ready for soul winning, you don't need the miraculous. Whether you are a singer, whatever you are, you must make up your mind to begin to talk to people about the Lord Jesus. What if they get angry with me? Jesus hung naked on the cross. What will you not give up for him? The programs on campus, listen to me. I know there are many campus presidents. Make sure your programs, this session, are evangelistic in nature. We are tired of jamborees around. Make sure whatever it is that you do, let there be an ardent passion.
for souls. You must give people an opportunity to be born again. Say, I'm a soul winner. Don't just get them born again and throw them. Follow them up. Help them to be strengthened. That way, you can know you are doing ministry. Not when you have PA and PA and this and you have... Thank you, Jesus. We are ready to walk in authentic power. We don't want to miss out on the kingdom just doing stories here on earth. We want to be relevant to God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. 43. Please read something. And he, and he strictly charged him and forthwith he sent him away. And he said unto him, See that thou sayest nothing to a man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. 45. Please read. One to read. In so much that Jesus could no longer enter openly into a city. Today, we have mechanisms of holding people by force. You don't come to our church again. Go back and read your Bible. Shame on the church for this nonsense we do all around. There are churches today that have ID cards to make sure their members don't go any other place. Insecure men of God moving here and there. They won't go and study the Bible and contend for true spiritual power. They just see you in one fellowship and they come. They say, me, what I'm giving you is not enough. Of course it's not enough. That's the only reason why they'll run around looking for real solution. So you so the prophecy I'm giving you didn't work. It didn't work. You are just too afraid to tell him. It didn't work. Because God didn't send him. He's not a prophet. Pressure made him to say what God didn't say. Hallelujah. There are, there are all kinds of membership jargons. Go to places like Abuja and see. A building like this is another church. One is another church. Their ushers are standing behind one another. If somebody's coming, they say, hello, how are you? God bless you. And immediately they finish. The pastor calls them and queries them. And say, when has the church of God become a marketing jargon? Shame on the church. We spend millions of God's money and newspapers. Come and see the man of power. You are not a real man of power. Because when Benihin is coming to Nigeria, all the newspapers beg for an audience. What is wrong with you? You are running where God has not sent you. Powerless Christians who will not humble themselves and listen. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus was begging. And say, don't tell anybody. Let me tell you something. Have you had people complain and say, it's because our church is too far. For say our church is near. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. All those things are just jargons. It's not true. Say, for say, God gave me a land in Port Harcourt or Lagos. But I would have been suffering. You will be surprised. You think people are idiots. You see, men of God are so used to deceiving people that they think people don't have brains again. Do you know what it means? For someone to prepare from 4 o'clock and run and come and stand and say he's coming for koinonia. You really believe he's just coming because of certain men? And families, there are people here right now that came some from Abuja. There are people already calling me, coming from all over this country for the miracle service. You really believe that they like the way my face looks? Or they don't have anything to do with their lives? For the kingdom of God... Is not in the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power. John sent. He said, go and tell Jesus. Go and ask him. Are you the one to come? It was the same John that said that the one who sent me said upon the one whom I see a dove. He is the lamb. He is the one that said, behold the lamb. Now John was under pressure and he said, go and ask this guy. In other words, I expect a level of demonstration. Now I'm in the prison. I've not seen it. Is he the one? And the moment they spoke to Jesus, we'll read that later on. 
Jesus just looked at them and said, watch me. He healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, healed people and said, go and tell John what you have seen. In other words, what in your law should be the character of the Messiah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 32 of chapter 3. Mark. Are you there? 32. And the multitude sat about him. There you see multitude again. Is that correct? And the multitude. Jump to verse 4. Number 1. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a what? Great multitude. Are you seeing there again? The desert multitude. The mountain multitude. The seaside multitude. Everywhere multitude. Why? Because there was a manifestation of the kingdom. A manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why don't we have Christians coming for, to our faculties? Because you people are not praying for a demonstration of the kingdom. Now when I talk about a demonstration of the kingdom, I will show you what I mean. A demonstration of the kingdom is not falling down. Many people have reduced the Christian experience so that when you are saying in the name of Jesus, your days of captivity are over, everybody's looking. Nobody fell down. They just say, this word, Jerry. This guy should go and sit down. Hallelujah. Miracles draw the people and then Jesus saves them. The biblical tool for evangelism is the miraculous. Whenever there is an outpouring of miracles, an outpouring of signs, wonders, breakthrough, genuine breakthrough, that people come in and they receive the touch, the tangible hand of God, transformation in their lives, their families, their finances, their health, their understanding, their passion for God, then the kingdom has come. Hallelujah. Miracles are the tools that draw people to Jesus. And then the reality of the gospel reaches out to them. The clearest manifestation of the glory of God is in miracles and signs and wonders. Not many people have had the opportunity to go to crusade grounds. Otherwise, if you go to a typical village crusade ground, you will appreciate the place of miracles. Because while you are interpreting, the people are sleeping. In their mind, they are waiting for something more than your talk. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the other person say, we are being so they are sleeping. They are not interested in your talk. While you are talking, it's only the women that will say, hmm. And that's just because they have a heart for God. But when one crippled person Leaves his crotch. Every sleeper will wake up. Sleep will disappear one time. Hallelujah. When a, a known herbalist in that land comes in and you look at the man and cast out that devil and the man goes to sit down. Let me tell you something. The next day, you will have to beg for a bigger venue. Reinhard Bonke was giving a biography of his ministry. He said God sent him to go to one African country and start a crusade. When he went there, he met a pastor with just a little congregation of maybe about a hundred people. And he said, God told me to go to the stadium. The pastor laughed at, at him and said, me, I have not gone to the stadium. I don't have that kind of grace. Reinhard Bonke prepared and brought all his team. They rented the stadium. And when he got in, he saw only the church members of that man. Imagine a stadium that can take about 50,000 people. And then you see just one little seat that is for dignitaries. With the members of the church, they are just singing. Renard Bonke said he was disappointed. Nobody knew him. Why? It's not that nobody knew him. Nobody had seen the demonstration of the kingdom through him. Because he said right there, he began to minister to them. And about five or seven notably sick people were there. He said by the next day, the crowd had turned to about 5,000 people. News. News. Let me tell you something. Genuine news 
does not need GSM to spread. Genuine, if it's genuine news, you just hold on. For instance, if they say your accommodation is open this night, ladies, many of you, even if you don't have phone, you will hear. That's how the miraculous can bring people to Jesus Christ. Somebody will go out of his way to travel a distance and say, I have a story for you. God did something in the life of my mother. My father was divorced. He vowed that he would never come back home. But the prayers went on him. And this guy cannot sleep again. He's calling my old mother, my uh, uh, sweetheart, or my honey, or my sugar. And your old mother says, hey, hey, hey. The demonstration of the kingdom. When two of them hold their hands and come to church, your unbelieving brothers will start thinking twice. Hallelujah. Say, I believe in miracles. Say it, I believe in miracles. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your neighbor is involved in witchcraft and divination and all kinds of things. And you pack in and you do an introductory prayer session around the house to highlight them that one who carries true fire has come. And they receive the reverberation from their house. And then you go out and meet the man and say, I'm your neighbor. And by the grace of God, I've paid for two years. The man knows for sure that he's in trouble in that many two years. When people say, hey, this woman, they gossip about it. They say, this woman is a witch. I saw her. What are you doing about it? And you see believers so helpless. Your child is coughing. They say, I know. They want to make money with him. Hey, this is how this boy will die now. What you need is a gospel of power. That an ambassador steps into that place and says, what is going on here? And they say, this woman wants to, they want to do this and that from the village. Work out kinds of witchcraft. You say, really? He say, oh, thank God we are here. It's a simple issue. Let the boy. See, the Bible says, Jesus entered and saw Peter's mother-in-law sick with a fever. The Bible didn't say he prayed. He held and lifted and said, go and serve us, Jerry. We are hungry. Power. Kapatalabaya. Through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves. You just go to the realm of the spirit and find out how many demons and principalities work every week to make sure you don't get blessed here. And, wonder, and then you wonder why we live as if Satan does not exist here. Because Jesus is alive. Hmm. Hallelujah. We travel around all the time. All the time. Many of you, where you want to travel, you don't talk. So let me not sin against God in case anything happens. Sorry, sir. You the last person sitting here. Mm, what kind of life is that? You look at the driver and see one guy with a drowsy eye. Say, me, let's ask, oh, is this guy well? Is this guy well? See, we need a church with genuine, authentic power. Hallelujah. The miraculous opens up the hearts of people to receive Christ. That's why after the miracle service, when we make altar calls, there are some brothers you see coming out, you know it's God that brought this one. The way the guy is even coming out, he's even surprised. What is bringing me out and he's still coming? You see him standing and wondering as if someone brought him out. Of course, it's the power. It's called anakazo, the compelling power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. But the balance here is that you don't center your ministry around miracles. You center your ministry around Jesus. This is where my preaching of the balance starts. Because you see, the miraculous is not a teaching, it's a demonstration. You just teach it to help people comprehend. Hallelujah. So when your ministry it's all about miracles. Miracles are a tool. Are you listening to me? Hear me. If your demonstration of miracles does not lead men to Jesus Christ, God is not glorified in that activity that is going on. Please write it. 
if at the end of all your display of power and falling down and rolling and sweeping the carpet people do not come to the genuine knowledge of Jesus Christ you did not glorify God I don't care how charismatic it was so you don't center your ministry around Jesus around miracles but Jesus he said if I be lifted up if I not if wheelchairs be lifted up not if crutches be lifted up not if tumors be lifted up not if dead people be lifted up if I Jesus the son of the living God be lifted up I will draw all men so miracles are tools are you listening to me they are tools that bring people to Jesus Christ if they do not come to the practical saving knowledge of Jesus Christ then something was wrong hallelujah but now we see that there is what an error in the church still among the charismatics that an emphasis has switched away from who Jesus Christ I want to ask you a question how many times have you had preachers mention the name of Jesus in many pulpits for many people it was last year and they preached four times into the new year they raised offering they talked about vow they talked about first food profess offering but they did not mention the name Jesus hallelujah they played documentaries for hour about the man they just saw slow motion he stands and heals the sick and does every kind of thing he wants to do and then he does everything and at the end of it nobody says anything about Jesus and people share the man and he's so happy Jesus is absent hallelujah Jesus must become the center of our ministry not apostles not prophets not miracles not money not wisdom but Jesus say Jesus is the center of my life and everything that I do say Jesus is the center in koinonia yes may God forbid the day that we'll forget about Jesus and start marketing ourselves and marketing power and marketing Joshua Selman and marketing all kinds of things may God forbid that day where Jesus will stop becoming our focus either because of the levels of grace that he has brought us and if I be lifted up I will draw all men by myself the reward for lifting him up is that he grants the miracles that bring the people to him because he said I will draw hallelujah there are so many people in the church right now now listen because of this pressure of miracles miracles right now listen there are so many people under pressure it takes a while write it for the miraculous to begin to manifest in your life it takes the dealings of god it takes the pruning of god you must be proven genuinely i'm telling you if you want to walk in authentic power Authentic power responds to a, a, a dealing with God. Many of you see men of God who are anointed. Share their stories and their sacrifices first. And then you will know why God has rewarded them. If I begin to tell some of you the sacrifices and the things that are done in the secret for the power that you see. Forget about the suit. Don't be deceived by it. Behind every glory there is a story. Are you listening to me? I'm talking of authentic Christian power. But right now, there are many men of God. They don't talk about Jesus. They have no regard for the world. But there are terrible manifestations of miracles in their churches. Something is wrong. Say after me, something is wrong. And this is what I'll be rounding up with. We'll stop wherever we can stop. It's a series. I don't want to rush it. I want to take it in depth so that you get it. Hallelujah. As a result of the craze, knowing now that the miraculous brings members and for many pastors more members means more what more money thank you so you know more members 
mean more money, more honor, more prestige. When you stand in the midst of other pastors, say you have many members that hey, small boy, I why can I sit with you? How many five thousand? I say here yeah, we can sit now. Say, I'm trusting God for expansion. And you hear men of God sit down. How many members do you have? How many members? And then the other one who has only thirty get intimidated, and the guy say you see. Three months later, the guy is preaching. He said he caught one principle. Oh God, tell us. Tell us what principle did you get? Hallelujah. The tragedy of witchcraft in the church. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I will not hide it from you. I love you too much to lie to you. Many men of God, you see, manifesting what they call power have gotten these things from demons and devils and witches. Right now, there are all kinds of... Any man, whether prophet or not, if you cannot see, if you cannot hear, sorry for you. And the Bible says there are people with itching ears and they love it so. Right now, when people come in for meeting and they see the man of God, say, let's go straight to the word. He said, ah... No falling down, no nothing. Uh, oh God, let's go. You just go this way. I'll come out. We'll meet later and disappear from this place. Say, so what kind of boring man is this? And so you put pressure on the men of God. Although they are still walking with God. See, let me tell you something. There are three kinds of men. There are three kinds of error in the body of Christ that God must resolve. Especially for a lot of people who want to just jump into ministry. Hold on and listen to me first. Number one. We have witches and wizards in the church. Direct occultists. They have sold their souls to the devil. God didn't call them. They are agents of darkness. They came from the pit of hell. That's category one. Their job is to come and mislead a lot of people. They are occultists. Are you listening to me? Different men of God. I'm telling you, they have mixed their wine with the water. I read an article, verified article. You read it, Jangfa, yesterday. About a woman in Port Harcourt who empowers most of the men of God in Abuja, including a popular bishop. Now, I don't just read junks and come and talk to you. Are you listening to me? I have common sense. I know that this message will go as far as it can go. So if I talk to you, these things are verified. Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Great men of God. It's a, it's a cult. It's a movement. Registration fee is 100,000, first and foremost. And w- which is easy when they collect your offering for two weeks. Is that not enough? Don't pity them. It's your offering that, that went there. After that, what happens? The Bible, I said the Bible, um, the article. Praise God. The article says that they now commit all kinds of immoral acts with that woman. Shameful, immoral acts that should not even be mentioned. And then after that, there are different kinds of oil. And according to, this is somebody that was going to be initiated and had to draw back. The most popular oil right now is called seeing oil. They wash your eyes with it. And you just look. You can see everything. Hallelujah. Everything. That's why you see every man just looks. You are this. You who just got married. And he moves in dramatic accuracy. Because with that in two weeks, he can triple the membership. Because the truth is people have needs. Are you listening to me? People have genuine needs. When they see real solutions, they will go. They will go. They have genuine needs. And this man is receiving money. Of course, if somebody wants to spend 10 million on his health and you got him healed, ah, can't he take half of it and say, Pastor, I would have gone to India. Now you have helped me. Let me reduce your body in the ministry. If if in one day you can make five million, is that not a lucrative business? Answer me. And then he buys another one. Rub it on his eyes. These men sleep with women and do all kinds of things. Minutes to their, their ministration to maintain some of these powers. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. 
Then the next one, they called it do as I say. Aren't you amazed at how daft the members of many churches are? Anything they ask them to do. The newspaper one time recorded how that some people, members went to church naked. Remember the article? Some people would only read newspapers. Hallelujah. Members. Imagine a father and a mother say, are you ready now? Kids, let's go. That's what happened. Madness in the body of Christ. They entered the church naked. No, see, when I say naked, I'm not talking of Jesus of Nazareth kind of naked. Naked. Can you imagine everybody in Koinonia here naked? What is wrong with us? Yes, but that's what happened. That cannot be normal. The Spirit of God is not an idiot. We have misrepresented the Holy Spirit to the, to the world. God is, not, God is not a daft person. Please, let's not make Jesus Christ look like a stupid person. Hallelujah. And when you get that kind of oil, you can do anything to anybody. That's why you can see a man who buy his house. They just cut the scissors of the house. Next week is the pastor that packed inside. Brother, what happened? They say seed. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. When, when you see genuine things, you celebrate them. Manipulation and witchcraft. I was told of a man of God that saw a beautiful plot of land. Belonging to one of his members. The guy just says, Hey! Ah, yeah. And the lady said, What is wrong? I said, You will die now. And she called her brother in UK. He said, Let's give this man the land. Oh. They gave the guy land. He erected a structure quick on it. Now they are, they are in the court. The land is worth 80 million. The man manipulated them into sowing it to him. What if that man were your father? You will not enjoy for years, Kenna. Because one man of God has come to manipulate your, your, the, des the financial destiny of the family. Are you listening to me? And then the next oil is specifically for ladies. Hallelujah. According to the article, they say it's called touch and follow. I have been amazed at the, the vulnerability of many ladies to men of God. It looks like they don't, men don't have wombs. They don't get pregnant. So, a lady who knows that she can be vulnerable, you see a man of God just looks at her. They come for conferences. And welfare, the ladies that serve them, after serving me water like this, you just look at her. And write as if God spoke. Later, they come to meet you in the hotel room. Man of God, your message was powerful. The next thing, that lady won't come out of that hotel room again. What kind of nonsense is going on in, in the church? I was speaking with Jake the other day. I said, I don't know how people reason. Aside from the fear of God, I was discussing with Jake. I said, what if I tell you now, let me sleep with you and you run away and say it's not good. Hey, you can imagine. This is what I think about. Oh. I don't know how the men of God talk to the ladies. I was telling Jake, I said, Jake, now, imagine I tell this girl I want to sleep with you and the lady say, ha, you preach this against us and you run away. Your, your prayer now will be really let nobody know. It's not, you don't want to sleep again. This is how I'm thinking. It is my simple thought. It may not be your own, it's my own. In one day, hear me, in one day, that which you have labored for years to build will crash in one day. The Bible says, how are the mighty fallen? That's why the Bible taught about the strange woman. It said, she has cast down many. Yea, many mighty men have been wounded by her. So for those of you who cannot see anything, they are passing scared. You are already smiling and warming up that you want to do ministry. You better go and close up yourself and flog it out with destiny. Otherwise, you will receive a root shock. Hallelujah. say a lady tell her to come and spend weekend in your house you say you are you are prayer partners what, what is partner what is prayer partner stop it stop it if you are doing it stop it i'm not joking see this is what kills grace so you see a man who is fiery tomorrow you won't hear anything about him again i'm not saying don't be nice don't relate we relate to people 
but that you must take an oath before God and say, Oh Lord my God, by your mercies would you help me? It's not by the strength of a man, but let me tell you something, there must be a determination. All the guys stand up. Stand up. Say in the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to walk in true holiness and walk in the authentic power of God. In the name of Jesus, I make up my mind not to defile myself by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive grace to say no to sin, to say no to anything that will eat up my destiny. I have a glorious destiny. I have nations to conquer. And not Delilah will tear my destiny down. God bless you. Please sit down. Ladies, stand up. This is Koinonia. Stand up. Please, we are, we are not joking here. This is a training camp. Inside and outside, stand up. We need to take this thing seriously. Many of you, when you hear this thing said, you just laugh. You don't know the severity of Satan eating up a man's destiny in one day. Lift up your hands, ladies. And say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace and power above and against immorality. Say, in the name of Jesus, no man, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle would deceive me and mislead me to abort my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I receive strength to run with the spirit of Elijah away from every appearance of evil. I receive wisdom. I receive courage. And I receive power. God bless you. Be seated and celebrate Jesus in this place. Let's know that there can be real Christians in the body of Christ. For once, let's trust the power that comes upon the altar. That is not every anointing that is polluted. There must be something in your life that distinguishes that you are a genuine child of God. There must be something. The gospel of power. Many of these men, the women in their churches don't rest. You see all the sisters, they are always looking down when he's preaching. Because they are surprised at what he's saying. He has already booked the lady he will sleep with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the guy is standing and speaking, and the lady is wondering. I know many people won't like me, but I will say it. You know me. We will say it. Koinonia is where you will hear it as it is. Hallelujah. So there are all kinds of anointings. Because people have been pressured. All kinds of anointing. There is the one for pulling crowd. Pulling crowd. You rub it on your chairs. You rub it everywhere. Members come and sit down and they cannot understand themselves again. You see people fighting at home. You must come to our church. You must come to our church. Our pastor must do this. Shut up! Is it only your church that God is there? Give people peace. Let the Holy Spirit bring them, not your disturbance. There are many of you now. Some people are angry with you because you didn't come to their church. What kind of nonsense is this? Some of you are even angry at some others because they didn't come for Koinonia. Say you will see. Just pray. If God cannot bring them, you won't bring them. Say you won't come and see our pastor. Abhi. You are the ones that make them think we are fake. Hallelujah. It's a year of supernatural exploits. So God is cleaning the house now. Hallelujah. So that when you see, I'm not teaching you to be judgmental. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. These men don't preach Christ. They don't love God. They have no respect for altar calls. But you see a manifestation of fearful miracles. Brother, something is wrong. I can tell you that. 
These men have convincing and enticing power. And so it's difficult for you to discern. Hallelujah. Say, no man will deceive me. I'm not saying any man you just see fall down in. You, you go for one program and somebody falls and No. They must not behave like me. People have their behaviors. Are you listening to me? You can meet a man who preaches and say, Oh, when God says, go, you move. And he says, it's fake. He's not fake. It's just differences in personality. Are you listening to me? A man can preach and jump on this pulpit and sit down and say, this guy is fake. He may not be fake. Oh. So don't you just think, you announce that, ah, I went to one program yesterday, that man must be fake. No. You must not have a man that is as serious as me to show that he's serious with God. No. Hallelujah. But there, there is always grace. Because some of you will be walking in the past. So that's the second category of people. Innocent men who got to mix their wine. The third category, please listen. And this is even the most dangerous. The third category are very innocent people. Listen to me. Because of the innocence, the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest he be the partakers of their sins. Hallelujah. There are many people that come. Many of you like it. You like laying of hands. Anybody you just you say, oh sir, the oil of your life. And you receive what you cannot explain now. From the day they laid hands on you, a realm was opened up to you. You know this is not the Holy Spirit that opened that realm. So these are the innocent people. Hallelujah. They are innocent. They are naive. But they are entering experiences already that their genuine Christian experience is not supposed to give. And they are moving in dimensions that are faulty. They do not even know. Hallelujah. There are many people with that kind of thing. Praise God. There was a time Ben Hinn's brother, a man came, a proper homosexual. He's a minister too. Proper homosexual. Not, not one who is struggling with something. I'm not talking of those who are struggling with habits and God is helping them. Are you listening to me? The difference is, there are people who are struggling with things. Alright? But you see, their heart is always open for God to help them. There are others who the Bible says their heart has been seared with hot iron. They have come to a point where they are non-repentant. That's the kind. And he came and he was going to lay his hand on Ben Hinn's brother. And Ben Hinn's brother just looked and saw his spirit. Together with the man's hand, he held his hand. He said, no way, not on my head. See, have you not seen that there are certain people, the moment some hands are laid on them, they carry on some attitude and characteristic. Suddenly, the, they laid hands on you and you cannot see women and leave them in peace again. They laid hands on you and you start desiring men. Your roommate has packed out. They left only you in the room. Come for miracle service. Something is wrong. Break your pride. I don't care what fellowship or what church you are leading. And come. You see, and another thing is, men of God are not open to admit that there are challenges like this. I'm fine, glory. No, you are not fine. You need help. You need help. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are some of you seated here, innocently, who became victims of some of these people? The Spirit of Christ, when imparted upon you, will bring a true life of holiness and righteousness. We love Jesus, and all your demonstration of power and everything will be more of Him and less of you. So could it be that some of you traveled to Port Harcourt, Abuja, or one man of God came from Ghana, one prophet. The day he laid hands on you, he just scattered your destiny into two. The Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This thing has happened to some of our families. Are, you not, are there not some prophets that came to your house? From that day, your father cannot become himself again. Your mother cannot become herself again. They, you will carry your money like this. They obey your father. He, your mother does not even know. He's going to go and meet the prophet. In, uh, are some of your families not suffering it? Say yes. Because it's not a lie. They brought one candle. They brought one prophetic oil for them to buy. Your father will beat you and slap you and say you must rob that oil. Oh. You must rob it. They said something is wrong. The next thing, he had three cars. Now it's only one. Where did two go? The prophet will drive it and enter your house. 
and say, ah, how are you doing? Is well. He knows when to discern when they pay your father. And he just comes. Your mother is tired of him. He comes. He says, sorry, I don't like salt in my own fish. Your father says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go and make you fish for the man of God. They come into families and wreck that families. I assure you, they are devilish. I don't care who. Because the true spirit of Christ. The Bible says he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not breaking apart. So on one side we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. As a demonstration of the kingdom. But then we must be careful. Lest our entire attention be upon miracles. And then we allow pressure. That's why I told you that the authentic power of God comes with a process. We are talking with John Fire yesterday and I told him, I said, see, the way the church is, listen to me. I read my Bible, oh. Do you know there are many churches right now, because of the way the church is, there is even no need to read your Bible. Because they don't even give any respect for the Bible. The members don't read Bibles. I follow me now. Nothing happens. And then we have the generation of iPads. You can buy your iPad, but carry a hard copy Bible and come for Koinonia with it. Hard copy Bible. Because very soon now, you stop coming with iPad, you come with phone alone. Very soon, you just put two tracks on your pocket. And the next thing, you're on your way to hellfire. Technology should not make us idiots. Carry your Bible and come to church. I know you will criticize me, but I will say it. If your pastor uses iPad, please don't criticize him. I listen to me. There are great men of God. Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy, um, House on the Rock, different men of God. My friend, Pastor Pete Rock. And there's nothing wrong. Buy your iPad. But I'm saying when you get the madness that you cannot study the word, you cannot do anything, carry your Bible, carry a good notebook. You don't carry your iPad to class. You carry an exercise book. As your teacher is writing, you write. That's how you become a good student. Carry iPad and see how many courses you carry over. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Next week I will consider what the Bible calls the doctrine of Balaam. We are going to consider it next week. And you will see how that Balaam was a real prophet. But something happened on the way. To the point that the Bible detests three times. The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. It talks of the error of Balaam. It talks of the doctrine of Balaam. From a, an error, it became a way. It became a doctrine. We we'll examine it. How that Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Ammon, to go and curse the nation of Israel. And God told him no. But they send royal people with money. And the guy said, hey, you people should sleep first. Let me talk to God again. And you will see that this attitude of men of God has been in the Bible. And the Bible warns in Revelation. To the church in Pagamos. It says, the doctrine of Balaam. You know what Balaam did? I will share it with you next week. Balaam made the, the Moabites, Moabite women... To be meandering around the boundary of the Israelites. And the men looked at them and began to sleep with them. And they brought a curse upon themselves. Balaam said, I can't curse them. But I can advise you, Balak, to tell them to do something that will make them curse themselves. And you will see the prototype of what many prophets are carrying in Nigeria. Hi, Precious Saints. Prayer remains one of the powerful instrumentality the bible said building up your most holy faith by praying in the holy ghost this is one way faith is being geared by the instrumentality of prayer and like jesus rightfully said he said men ought always to pray and not to faint in seasons as this you ought to engage your faith in the place of prayer don't forget that anything that is stopping you from praying is a battle against your peoples against your destiny and so you should not permit that fight it with everything you've got you see because god said he will always be with you when you pass through the fire your assurance has been given and guaranteed by god on your part is to do well to always ensure you war these things even by prayer pray in the night pray in the moonlight pray 
in the morning pray in the afternoon pray every time pray every day of your life because this is one way to send the devil packing out of your life are you weak spiritually are you tired your prayer altar is cold ensure you engage these things in prayer business is not working ministry may not be going fine don't forget prayer by prayer men of old conquer by faith men of old triumphed god bless you even as you listen to god's word get charged set your altar on fire and also build a consistent prayer walk with the lord see you in our next video we we'll also like you to share this video so that many others will also get revived we love you so much god bless you